EA source code was stolen, a seven-year-old Linux flaw was discovered, and 1.2 terabytes of data was mysteriously stolen from millions of Windows PCs. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 15th, 2021. This is your weekly summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. We have some new vulnerabilities to get into, so on to the news. In a data breach that apparently happened through stealing cookies and social engineering an employee via a Slack channel, the gaming publisher Electronic Arts had about 780 gigs of data stolen. This included source code and internal tools used by the company. Actors claiming to be behind this attack reported they had stolen the Frostbite game engine source code and debug tools. In case you didn't know, Frostbite is used to power FIFA, Madden, and Battlefield, for example. FIFA 21 matchmaking server code and source code was also stolen, API keys and SDKs related to Xbox and Sony, as well as proprietary framework data. A representative for the attackers provided screenshots showing some of the stolen data to news outlets as proof of this breach. And then EA later confirmed this information, but they stated that it was not a ransomware attack and they didn't expect impact to their games or business. They also noted the hack did not affect player data or privacy. An investigation is currently ongoing. There is some speculation about the data and EA's response. For example, if a threat actor has access to this kind of data already, they could use it for finding bugs or vulnerabilities in the games. They could pirate the games or the software. They could create cheats. They can monetize the data in various ways. It is intellectual property, so it could have consequences down the road for EA as well. The attackers are now trying to sell off the data to customers for $28 million through hacking marketplaces and forums. The original sales post has been edited by the seller with links to new sales on alternative forums. According to Vice, a representative for the attackers came forward speaking about how the hack actually happened. They were able to purchase stolen cookies for $10. That's it. And they gained access to a Slack channel for EA employees. They then messaged the IT staff to say that they had lost their phone at a party and they needed a multi-factor code, allowing them access to the corporate network. They discovered a developer section of the network where games are compiled, they created a VM, and they started accessing and downloading source code. EA did not attend E3 2021 this week. And given this news, it's probably a good thing. A privilege escalation vulnerability was recently discovered in Linux distros that was introduced about seven years ago, back in 2013, and it was never fixed. This exists within Policy Kit, aka Paul Kit, which is a toolkit that handles authorizations in Linux distros, so unprivileged processes can still talk to privileged processes. The flaw could allow a threat actor to gain escalated privileges to a root user from unprivileged access. A fix is now available as of June 3rd, so upgrade your Linux installation ASAP if possible for Polkit version 0.119. The vulnerability is tracked as CVE 2021 3560 with a score of 7.8, and it affects any systems that have Polkit version 0.113 or later installed on them, including Ubuntu 20.04 and Red Hat Enterprise Linux number 8. Security researcher Kevin Backhouse, who originally discovered this issue, posted a technical analysis of this vulnerability and explained that it's fairly easy to exploit, so it is crucial to update as soon as possible. An attacker could open a terminal and use commands such as bash, kill, triggering the flaw with dbus send, and then terminating while Polkit is in the middle of processing a request. That causes an authentication bypass, treating this as if it has root privileges. So according to his post, this flaw was first introduced to Polkit way back in 2013 in a code commit on November 9th. 
It affects version 0.113 and 0.118, along with Debian-based distros, including PolKit 0.105. According to a Red Hat advisory, this happens due to the process not being able to verify privileges of a requesting process. So to quote, when a requesting process disconnects from DBus daemon just before the call to PolKit system bus name get cres stink starts, the process cannot get a unique unique UID or PID of the process, and it cannot verify the privileges of the requesting process. The highest threat from this vulnerability is to data confidentiality and integrity, as well as system availability. Since an attacker has to trigger the flaw at the correct time, this can vary from machine to machine, and that may be a reason why it was never discovered previously. A demo video was created via the GitHub YouTube channel by Kevin, and it does show it takes less than three minutes to accomplish along with very few terminal commands. I've provided that link to the demo in the notes for this segment. I want to say a big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support as usual. And a quick shout out to Ryan for joining the Threatwire Alliance and as always for supporting the show. Thank you. Patreon exclusive merchandise was just unlocked last month as a new perk for the Threatwire Alliance. So now is a great time to join the team as you will get the first round of art designs for this year. Check the Patreon page for more details and do not forget, patrons always get exclusive access to an audio only podcast version of this show. And now on to the third news story. According to NordLocker, recently discovered malware made its way through PCs and stole 1.2 terabytes of data, including 26 million login credentials, 1.1 million unique email addresses, 1 billion plus browser cookies, and 6.6 .6 million files. That includes, in some cases, passwords that were stored in clear text and saved into notepad files, 1 million images were stolen, along with 650,000 Word and PDF. PDF files. Data also included personal information from messaging, gaming, email, and file sharing applications. This malware took screenshots via victim webcams and screenshots of the infected computer. All of this happened from 2018 to 2020 to 3.25 million PCs, all of which were running Windows. 22% of the cookies found in this database were still valid at time of recording when it was discovered as well. The data could be sorted by unique device ID to make it even worse. Now this included hundreds and hundreds of thousands of credentials from social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter, gaming platforms like Steam and EA logins, online retailer sites, job search websites, even login credentials for cryptocurrency wallets and PayPal. Cookies included sites like Amazon, Steam, Facebook again, YouTube, and a whole lot more. Autofill data was stolen from apps like Chrome and Firefox. So NordLocker worked with a third-party data breach research company to analyze the data found and determine that victims would not likely know if they were even compromised in the first place. The database of stolen files was revealed by the attackers accidentally, and the hosting cloud provider was notified so that it could be removed. NordLocker explained that the screenshots from the database show that it was spread through illegal software like a pirated copy of Photoshop 2018, Windows cracking tools and pirated games. Since it is newly discovered, the malware does not have a name, nor did they choose to name it, nor would it necessarily be flagged by antivirus software. They do recommend using good internet hygiene like password managers, encrypting data, deleting cookies, using legitimate software, and keeping your AV up to date. And they definitely advertise their own product, NordLocker. Not much is known at this time about who is behind this attack, but it could be as simple as a malicious actor buying some custom malware for a hundred bucks to infect PCs with a Trojan type malware tool. Other than the usual cyber hygiene, what can you really do? Well, luckily, Troy Hunt of HaveIBeenPwned.com has added all compromised email addresses to their database, so you can be notified if your email address is a part of this. It is a sensitive database, though, so you do have to verify via your own email inbox that you have access to that email address before you will be notified of it being a part of the leak. 
Now this week on Morse code, I ran 10 gig ethernet in my new YouTube studio. It was so much fun and I really appreciate all the comments on that video. Subscribe to my channel, which is youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for more of that kind of content about this studio build out. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel as well. I'm Shannon Morse and I'll see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.